I have so much to say about this Diffenbachia, otherwise known as dumb cane. And the reason why for that common name, dumb cane, is because it has some calcium oxalate crystals. So if you have any kids or pets that like to eat your plants, then this is probably not one to have around the house because it is a little toxic. However, I have to say, and you might see some of these little gnawing bits off of my Diffenbachia, all of this is actually from my pet chicken because she has a tendency to like to eat my Diffenbachia for whatever reason. So everything here, this little mechanical damage down here is actually from her beak. And she has mowed over some of my Diffenbachia. So I actually don't even know if dumb cane has the same effect that it does on chickens as it does maybe on uh, kids or humans or, or pets. But um, this is a kind of controversial plant to have around your house for, for that reason. But also it could be a very challenging one for people largely because of this. And I'm gonna show you how crooked and stemmy this plant is in this little feature right here. So this one is really leaning over to the side and is kind of has this waterfall of leaves on this side because I'm not giving this a tremendous amount of light. This is in the interior of my space and the little light that it's getting is in a northeast facing window that I would have to say is maybe like 20 feet away from it. Uh, and it's thriving. I've had this for maybe five years, this Diffenbachia. It actually made me and encouraged me to get more Diffenbachia for my house, although I didn't always have such great success with um, with those. And I think it was just the combination of this plant was more acclimatized to a lower light condition within my house. And what is great about Diffenbachia is it is relatively easy to grow in the house because in its native environment, which is through Central and South America, it grows in a number and a range of conditions. It could be in a little bit more moist conditions, it could be in drier conditions, and could take a, a beating. I'd say not as much as you know a, maybe a Dracaena or um, snake plants or a Zamulcula samifolia, which is a ZZ plant, but they definitely could take a little bit more of a beating. The other downside to this plant is that, for the same reason, it gives it this like kind of caney, stemmy look, and a lot of folks don't like that from a standpoint of the way it looks after it starts to grow older. And I think it was important for me to actually show you the canes on the stem because some people would say that that looks a little ugly. But the good thing about it is that you could actually cut the stem back and that's actually a way to propagate it is, is through stem cuttings. So if you wanna kind of start all over again with this particular plant, then that's not necessarily a bad thing to do. This plant would enjoy a little bit of fertilizing, I would say on a monthly basis. And if you're giving it a more well-balanced fertilizer, if you're going the synthetic route, 20, 20, 20 is totally fine. Cut that in half or you could do a little bit gentler organic fertilizer for this particular plant. And as far as pests go, I mean, unless you have a pet chicken in the house <laughs> or an animal that likes to eat leaves, then I think that this hasn't had any pest pressures from me. No scales, no mealybugs, nothing of that nature. Otherwise, I think that this plant is a great survivor. And if you don't have little kids or pets that you're concerned about, then I would say getting a dumb cane is uh, totally fine, especially if you want something that's bushier and could fill out the space.